Cartesian product A cross B of two non-empty sets A and B is a set of all possible ordered pairs AB where first element of the ordered pair comes from set A and second element of the ordered pair comes from set B. Let's take an example in which set A is, so let A is a set A, B, C and there is another set B which is equal to 1 and 2. Let's take cross product or Cartesian product A cross B. Then A cross B will be a set of all ordered pairs AB where first element belongs to set A and second belongs to set B. So which one are those possible ordered pairs? The first one is A1, the second is A2, A2 and then B1, B1 and then B2 and then C1 and C2. Each pair must be separated by a comma and you know how to write a pair. Both elements within a pair must be separated by comma as well. So this is A cross B. If we want to calculate B cross A, we can find B cross A. Similarly, similarly we can define B cross A as well. B cross A is a set of ordered pairs. Now, first element of the pair will come from set B because we are defining B cross A. So what is possible element of the first pair? The 1A, 1A, 1B, 1B and then 1C and similarly 2A, 2B and 2C, 2C. We are not limited to finding A cross B or B cross A. We can also find B cross B or A cross A. So what would be B cross B then? B cross B, well, by the way, this B cross B can be called B square because B is multiplying with itself and this would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1 and 2, 2. So this is how we can calculate B square and similarly we can calculate A square as well. A square would be equal to A, 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 B, A, C, B, A, B, 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 C and then finally we are going to write three more pairs C, A, C, B and C, C. These are all ordered pairs. Now if you notice if we call this as a first case and call this as a second case, this as third case and this as a fourth case, then what we mean by cardinality of A cross B means the number of elements in A cross B. So A cross B will have how many numbers? This is equal to number of elements in set A times number of elements in set B. And how many elements in set A? There are three elements. How many elements in set B? Two. So this will be equal to six. Means cardinality of A cross B is equal to cardinality of A times cardinality of B. So this is number of elements 
in A cross B. Similarly, if we want to find out number of elements in B square, then B square, what will be the cardinality? That would be equal to B times B cardinality. This means that number of elements in B are 2. So 2 times 2 would be equal to 4. So this means that every possible combination which you can have with elements of one set to the elements of the second set is in fact the number of total total number of elements in the cross product. If A cross B, if A is equal to null set or B is equal to null set, any one of these is null set, then A cross B is equal to null set. Means if any one of the participating set is a null set, then the cross product will be a null set. If any one, any one of the participating set participating set in cross product cross product is empty empty then A cross B will be empty then the cross product will be cross product is equal to empty. So this is how we can see the cross product if any one of the participating set is an empty set. Let's define the same set visually using different representations. So this representation here what we have already done is a mathematical representation. So let's write down mathematical representation mathematical representation representation and this representation is A cross B is equal to set of all ordered pairs AB where this line means where first element belongs to set A and second element belongs to set B. This is how we can define in mathematical language the cross product of two non-empty sets A and B. But let's give it a visual representation. A visual representation using arrow diagram. Okay, representation, representation using arrow diagram arrow diagram so if this is the way let's call this as set A and which element A contains A contains A B and C these are three elements in set A and which elements belong to set B? This is 1 and this is 2. So these are two elements in set B. Then every possible association which A can have with elements of set B if this is A1, this is A2, this is B1, B2, C1, and C2. So these are all possible associations which can be made. So this is called representation using arrow diagram. You can see that every element of set A has all possible associations with elements of set B. So there are three elements 
and there are two elements n set b so a has two association one with a one and one with two b has two association b is associated with one then b is associated with two same is c1 and c2 so this is using arrow diagram if we were to use graphical method let's use a graphical representation and draw here a graph so graphical representation graphical representation would be that if we are going to if we are going to plot a cross b then a will be on the horizontal axis always the first element the first set that is on the first position that will go on the x-axis so here we can define this here as first element second element and third element let's call this as a this as b and then this as c if we call this one and then this as two then a one is this a two is this b one is this and b two is this c one and c two you can see that these dots are just like a rectangle and this is the graphical representation of a cross b if we were to calculate b cross a then elements of b would be on the horizontal axis so note here that while graphing or while representing representing a cross b a must be a must be plotted on on horizontal axis horizontal axis so whichever set is first set in the product that should be on the horizontal axis so this would be like a here and this would be the b the second will go on the y axis so this was the graphical representation and you can try using different sets this was the arrow diagram method we can also use the uh, tree diagram so if we use tree diagram then how many branches if we are going to define a cross b then let's start with branches of this tree with elements of a there are three elements of a so this will be one branch second branch and third branch and then this is called a this is b this is c and then there are two elements against every element of a that's why we have a one and two and similarly b one and two and c one and two so this is the tree diagram which represents a cross b always the first so here let's write down this that branches or nodes nodes in the start in the start would be would be for first set first set in the cross product we can also give it a tabular representation 
but that would be just like an arrow diagram. So that's it for now for cross product. And if you have any question, please post your questions and uh, I will try to answer as soon as I can.